Good morning, Digit fam. Adam Dowd here, closing out the week with some technology goodness to help you get through the cold, dark void of a Digit daily list weekend. I mean, seriously, people, how do you cope with not getting this daily dose of tech news through an entire Saturday and Sunday? Thank goodness for Monday, am I right? Well, we've got a lot to get to, so let's dive in. It is October 11th, 2019, and this is your Digit Daily. OnePlus had a second launch event yesterday, for some damn reason, where it introduced a new set of OnePlus 7T phones, this time the OnePlus 7T Pro and the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren Edition. So let's recap the phones that OnePlus has released in 2019. The OnePlus 7, the OnePlus 7 Pro, the OnePlus 7T, the OnePlus 7T Pro, and the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren Edition. Oh, and the OnePlus 7 Pro 5G. Confused yet? Say it a couple times real fast, that'll help. The OnePlus 7T Pro launches exclusively in Europe and Asia. No US launch for you. And basically, if the OnePlus 7 Pro and the OnePlus 7T had a baby, it would be this phone. That being said, the OnePlus 7T Pro is barely an upgrade over the OnePlus 7 Pro. It has a Snapdragon 855 Plus processor, so you get a minor boost in gaming performance. The McLaren Edition is mostly about the color scheme and the 12 gigabytes of RAM that you will literally never use. So that begs the question, should you upgrade from the 7 Pro to the 7T Pro, or from the 7 to the 7T? And the answer is... No. These phones are minor spec bumps up from their predecessors, but that's okay because these phones are not designed for OnePlus 7 owners. They're designed for people who are in the market for a new smartphone in general. Having a fast TikTok release cycle like this ensures that whenever a consumer is ready to buy a new phone, OnePlus has the latest and greatest for them. What does not make sense is having a totally separate launch event two weeks after the first launch event. That's the part that doesn't make sense. One could argue that the 7T is for the US and the 7T Pro is for the rest of the world, but I'm not sure that necessitates a totally separate event. But hey, you do you, OnePlus. Keeps us busy here at the Digit Daily, so we can't complain. So now, let's dive into a little Digit Intelligence, shall we? I picked up the Oculus Quest a couple of months ago, but I didn't impulsively make that purchase. Okay, I kind of impulsively made the purchase, but I did my research first and I picked the best solution for me. And as such, I became quite informed on the VR landscape of today. And I have some thoughts I'd like to share if you happen to be in the market. First up, we have the, oh, would you look at that? The Oculus Quest. I admit I might be a little biased on this one. I'm totally a lot biased on this one, but stick with me. Recent announcements have drastically increased this device's long-term value. For $400, you get a completely self-contained unit. No gaming PC, no base stations. Just grab the headset and go, literally, go anywhere you want. Plus, with the announcements that came from Oculus Connect a couple weeks ago, you'll be able to connect your Quest to a gaming PC, if you happen to have one, and get an even better experience. Add to that native hand tracking and some respectable specifications, and this is the headset to beat. Granted, I'm the one who always says, judge a product based on what it does today, not on what it might do tomorrow, which is totally fair. If you have a gaming PC already, and you don't plan to be mobile with this device, then you might want to consider the HTC Vive Cosmos. While this device and the Quest both share the same external cameras for positional tracking, this device leaves the Quest behind when it comes to additional amenities that you get. A flip-up display so you can get back to the world when it needs you, monster specs, and it adds the power of a gaming PC behind it, and good lord, the gaming experiences you will have will blow your freaking mind. HTC has been building great VR right out of the gate, and the Cosmos is the best of what's out there. But it also carries that $699 price tag, so you'll pay for the great experience. And finally, in the budget area, we have the PlayStation VR, which does require a PlayStation 4 or 5 game console. But for $200, and often with a bundled game, it's hard to go wrong with this. It's not the most powerful headset, it doesn't have the highest resolution. But if you want a low barrier to entry into VR, and you have a PlayStation, the PlayStation VR is a solid offering. So, now that I've completely justified my Oculus Quest purchase, let's head into the Roundup! 
Apple removed an app called HKMap.Live from the App Store, which was an app that pulled data from a bunch of different sources like Telegram to provide an idea of what protesters and police deployments looked like in Hong Kong. Tim Cook issued a company-wide memo that explained his reasoning for doing so, saying that individual police officers were being targeted and that areas with no police protection were also getting targeted through the use of the app. The main problem is that neither of those reasons make any sense given the app's limitations, the major one being that the app didn't provide real-time information. There was a pretty significant delay. Cook also didn't offer up any actual incidents, just a vague, very bad things were being done accusations, which seems flimsy. This has caused some to say that Apple bowed to Beijing, which might be a bit much, but let's just say Cook's evidence isn't exactly rock solid. Next week, Tuesday, is Pixel Day and this podcast's birthday, BT Dubs, and we've just seen a leak for what's being called the Pixelbook Go. We expect this will be a less expensive Pixelbook, which means it'll probably still cost too much, but probably not the insane thousand dollars that the Pixelbook has always cost. It looks to have configurations starting with 64 gigabytes of onboard storage, and I can't imagine I would want to use a Pixelbook with only 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. I have single folders in Google Drive with 64 gigabytes in them. Anyway, we'll get all the details that you need next week on these Chromebooks that you probably still shouldn't buy. If you're in the market for an e-bike or electric bike, The Verge has a great breakdown on what to look for. E-bikes are growing in popularity mostly because people are lazy and don't want to pedal. And I relate to that. As a bike enthusiast myself, I'm keenly interested in the products, and that gives me another idea for a digit intelligence, by the way. If I had an actual commute, I would probably have picked up an e-bike by now, but since I work from home and pretty much whenever I go somewhere I have a kid with me, it's just not practical for me at the moment. Add to that the fact that Chicago has pretty crappy bike weather six months out of the year, and yeah, I can probably wait for an e-bike. And finally, I'll leave you with a sobering look at the internet to ponder over the weekend. Ars Technica contracted two disinformation farmers and pitted them against each other to create a totally made-up company with a positive image campaign to gain likes and followers, then paid a separate troll farm to tear it down by the same social media tactics. Let's just say if you wanted to completely destroy an online presence... You can do it with little more than a six-pack of Red Bull and a bag of Cheetos in this day and age, and if that's not enough to scare you, I don't know what is. I'd also like to point out the fact that I love you all very, very much, and you are all just the very, very best listeners that anybody could ask for, and please don't hire trolls to destroy me. So that's going to do it for today's Digit Daily, hopefully not forever. If you'd like to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again on Monday. <laughs>